Secrets to Organizing a Small Business, today on Keeping You Organized. Hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized. We are going to unveil some secrets today, the secrets of organizing uh, a small business. And joining us is Julie Bestry from Best Results Organizing. Julie, how are you today? Fine, thank you. I'm really glad to be here. Now, you're going to share secrets with us, right? Uh, well, why are you sharing the secrets with us, first of all? Well, they're, they're not so much secrets, although they're, they're things that I guess have been kept from a lot of people. When people start small businesses, they either have no background in business or they have a background as being sort of a cog in the machine. Nobody has given them the, those secret squirrel messages that tell them how they can be more productive, have less clutter, get more done, and have more satisfaction. People start businesses because they love what they do, whether they're pastry chefs or, or mechanics. They love what they do, but all that paperwork and, and phone calls and appointments really gets them down, and people get overwhelmed by that. So our goal is to tell them a few, uh, whisper a, f a few secrets in their ears to make that uh, go a little more smoothly. Now, I know you have a lot of them. We're not going to share all of them today. And <laughs> later on, we're going to tell people about your book that has many of these in there. But let's talk about maybe the most common ones, top two or three uh, right now that, uh, uh, that you see over and over and over again. Because a lot of people think, oh, my problems are just mine. But there are probably some that are real common. What are the top ones you see? Well, definitely I see that the largest problem is people go by their gut instead of having a system. And mm. if that's working for you, if going by your gut is working for you, then you're probably not listening to a podcast on how to get more organized or not buying my book on how to get more organized. If going by your gut worked, then that would be great. But for most people, um, they need a little support. They need um, rituals, systems. And when we talk about organizing systems, we're talking about two things. We're talking about um, the physical, everything from what kind of office supplies you're using to how you're arranging your office. And that office may be a 10 by 10 concrete box or it might be your car if, you, if you're mostly in sales and you're traveling. Um, it could be um, just one little stand-up area in your restaurant. So um, having that physical system is important, but also having a set of behavioral rituals to, to build that system so that you know that nothing's going to fall through the cracks. So it's not just a system, but it's two parts of the system that go together. Good. Well, we're going to dig into that in a little bit. But I want to know, when you, when you meet with a client for the first time, how do you actually uh, assess whether or not they're a, you know, a gut feel person or not, make decisions? Is it, do you ask them some questions, or is it kind of obvious? Well, sometimes I know right from the first telephone conversation when um, we decide we're going to work together and we schedule an appointment and we pick a date and a time. And I'll ask them, so how are you going to remember that you have this appointment? I'll ask them, are you putting it in your uh, paper calendar? Are you writing it on a whiteboard? Are you hoping to remember it? And invariably somebody will say, oh, that's a good idea. I should write this down. And it's not that some, somebody's go, instinct is going to be, oh, I'm going to remember everything. But in the moment, people trust their guts. They trust their memories. And that means that everybody's trying to keep that inside. So my initial experience with a client is getting a sense of what are you already doing? When I walk into the office, I look around and if I see uh, piles of papers instead of um, stacks, you know, because some people are pilers and, and not filers, but if they have neat stacks, then I know that they're at least thinking categorically in some way. But if I'm seeing sort of sedimentary rock layers of paper piled up, then I know that they're putting things down instead of putting things away. And that's something that triggers the initial conversation that we have about making sure that things get put in a place where they can immediately find them again, or if they are absent, if someone else acting on their behalf can immediately find it. And that's where the physical part of the system and the behavioral part blend together. Well, how about if someone comes to you and say, well, listen, you know, I'm actually a pretty organized person. Uh, you know, you're seeing all the stacks and the piles there. Uh, 
how much of it is like time management and, you know, because a small business owner's got so many different responsibilities, wears so many hats, and, and how much of it is really um, maybe I am a hoarder or, I, or you know, maybe hoarder is not the right term, but I, I, I like a tiles and A collector, right. Uh, I mean, how do you, first of all, diagnose that? And then what would be some of the first things that you would um, ask someone to do, like, um, you know, get a planner, follow a certain uh, routine? How, how, do you, how do you dig into that, especially those piles? Well, one of the things we'll do is we'll do a mini part of the session and we'll start pulling things off the pile one thing at a time and say, this file here, is this a file you worked on today? You know, and and it's, it's very methodical in how we go through it in those first few minutes. We ask some basic questions. What does this file represent? Is it an action? Is it reference? Did you pull it out just to get a phone number? Or does it represent a meeting that you're about to go to or um, an activity you're working on now? Once we know what um, what situation that piece of paper or that file involves, then we can say, well, this belongs in your tickler file so that you can remember to act on it in three days. Because sometimes people put things out saying, that's going to remind me to act on it. Well, the problem with that is the minute you put something down on top of it, it's not reminding you of anything. So if it's something for action, it goes to the tickler file. If it is a reference item, we say, okay, is it something you're going to need to refer to today? And if not, it goes back into the filing system. If there is one, there's not a filing system, we know that that's going to trigger us creating a filing system or massaging an old unworking file system into one that's going to work well. There's no one size fits all with organizing an office any more than there is in the home. Um, I tell people, if every single formula worked for every single person, you wouldn't need professional organizers, you wouldn't need therapists, you, would, you wouldn't need anybody except mom to teach you things until you were about 10, and then you could just follow the rules for the rest of your life. We all have different ways of approaching things. People are auditory learners, they're visual learners, they're kinesthetic, they learn by um, handling things. So when I work with these clients, what I'm finding that I'm doing is just picking up one thing at a time and walking them through their actual lives. Rather than trying to build a system that they're going to fit into, we fit a system around them and the way they actually work. It makes no sense to create um, these hard-ruled systems for somebody who generally lives and, and flies by, by the seat of their pants. It really needs to cus be customized to how somebody lives and works. Well, when you, when you talk about tickler systems, you know, I, I think of the, you know, the file with the one through 30 days on it or however you organize them. I know mm -hmm. there's different, different ones. And in this day of electronics and, you know, reminders and outlook and this and that, um, uh, do people still use those? I mean, can that be an effective tool? You know, you're, you're talking about, are, are we going paperless? And, and the answer is yes and no. The truth is that every piece of paper that comes across our desk represents a task that we have to perform in some way. If it is a bill, a letter, um, a request for a proposal, while a lot of what we have does come in digitally, whether it's an email or a text or something that somebody has sent to Dropbox for us, the truth is we still are all getting so much. You know, we tend to think, you know, with a business, you can't just think inside the box in terms of a traditional business that's being transitioned digitally. But again, you have hair salons and you have bakeries and you have all sorts of businesses where, um, where paper is coming in um, or, or at least passing through. Uh, someone calls up on the phone and somebody grabs the back of an envelope and writes down a, a message. So while you can create digital tickler files, and, and we see this all the time, um, there's a way to create a digital tickler file using Evernote, for example, it's still the same premise that the information that comes into your life represents a task you have to perform using that information, whether it's something you're going to act on now or in the, the near term or something you're going to need to tuck away for reference so that it's going to be accessible to you later on. 
we can scan all we want. We can put everything up into the cloud. The paper is never going away. And that tickler file that I talked about, you can certainly make a desktop file folder with one uh, number of the folders, one through 31, and then have January to December. Um, the Smeed desktop, desktop file sorter is mm -hmm. all built in the accordion file. I, I'll tell you that um, accordion file system for using a tickler is great because it can be mobile. And more and more in our business lives, we need to be mobile. Whether a business is a one-person consultant or, um, or a small business can be 30 or 50 people, you might be at Starbucks waiting for somebody and have a half an hour and need to plow through your tasks. And having a mobile tickler file system really helps increase your productivity. Well, I've got another challenge for you because I, 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 I'm dealing with uh, an inbox uh, that just seems to get full. I'm going to let you think about that. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, let's talk about, you know, not only the systems, but how you train somebody to actually follow the system that you set up for them. Because I, I think that's going to be a challenge, too. So we're talking about uh, the secrets of organizing for small business with Julie Bestry uh, from Best Results Organizing. We'll be right back. With the size of office and desk space shrinking, it's time to get creative when organizing. Introducing the Cascading Wall Organizer by Smeed. The Cascading Wall Organizer saves desk space by utilizing often overlooked wall space. The six cascading pockets are removable to make viewing and accessing documents easy, while the elastic cord closure allows for security when transporting your files. With each pocket being able to hold 25 sheets of paper, that makes for a whole lot of storage right on your wall or door. No desktop space required. The clear front pocket is perfect for storing a calendar or small items that need to be accessed daily. This organizer is made from acid-free poly material, which makes it tear-proof and water-resistant. The Cascading Wall Organizer from Smeed, keeping you organized. We are back now on Keeping You Organized, talking about the secrets of organizing for small business uh, with uh, Julie Bestry, the author of, it's, it's 57 Secrets, right? You can hold up your book if you want to promote that. <laughs> uh, there we go. That's nice. And we'll include uh, links for that in the show notes as well. But um, 57 Secrets, I, I know we don't have time in this podcast to uh, cover all of them. But uh, before we went to the break, we were talking about um, uh, this idea of, you know, and I have to be. I have to admit. I think I've read every book on time management, organizing systems, and things like that. But I seem to just deal with this. Uh, you know, you hear the term inbox zero, and you know you can apply that to digital, probably paper too. But how do you keep ahead of that? How do you teach your clients to, you know, deal with all these incoming pieces of either electronic mail or mail? Well, first of all. Uh Zig Ziglar has this, had this great story, um, the major sales expert, and he talked about motivation, and he said, people say the problem with motivation is it doesn't last. And he said, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. <laughs> organizing is the same way. Organizing isn't um, a short trip you take so that you stay organized. It's just like keeping up with the laundry or brushing your teeth or anything you do with, with personal maintenance things keep coming in. So in order to make sure that you keep on top of it, the number one step is applying your seat to the chair. You know, put, put your behind in the chair and have at some point in every day a period where you are going through your stuff. If you wait for motivation to go through what's in your inbox, forget inbox zero. You're just going to have inbox one million and then inbox one million and six before you know it. So action precedes motivation. So you need to have a plan. It doesn't need to be the same time every day, although for many people, that sense of ritual, that every morning from 11 until noon, they're going to be processing their inbox, whether that's a digital inbox or a paper inbox. Having that set and blocked in time, letting Siri remind you or having your assistant remind you, um, until it becomes second nature. Almost everything in terms of how we organize our lives has become that way because we've let it become a ritual. Um, we get up in the morning and we brush our teeth because when we were children, 
every day, this is, this is how our parents taught us that, that these are the steps you take. And you come into your office and if you start putting out fires immediately, then you don't have any chance to go in and maintain and, uh, and keep things under control. So you need to have a fixed point, at least one in every day, to go through and start processing the paper. Once you do start processing it, you have to remember, you don't have to do everything. Delegation in small business, even if you're a one-person business, you can delegate by bartering with another, um, another professional. So if the accounting is coming in and numbers really aren't your thing, and, and you have another skill, obviously, because you have a business, you can barter with another professional, and you are delegating in that way. You can hire a virtual assistant. You can uh, hire your kids, and then you can invest in their, in their, uh, um, their IRAs that way, the, mm -hmm. the Roth. So there are all sorts of ways that you can make sure that once you apply, you're, you're behind the chair and start processing because you have set a time that you're going to take care of that, number one, you can figure out what doesn't need to be done by you. Second part of that is what does need to be done by you has to be done when it's appropriate for you to do it. That's why a tickler file is great. If you have 20 things in front of you, unprioritized, you're going to go for the low-hanging fruit. You're going to go for what's really easy to accomplish that's not going to make you cringe. The problem is that difficult stuff is never going to get tackled and the papers that represent the difficult stuff or those lines in your email box that represent the difficult stuff pile up. So you have to start thinking, okay, how am I going to break down these large looming projects into tiny minuscule tasks, things that I can tackle in 15 or 25 minutes? I'm sure you've had people talking on these podcasts about uh, the Pomodoro rule, the idea that you're just going to set the timer for 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when you're trying to get yourself to exercise and you say, well, I'm just going to get on the treadmill for 10 minutes. If you break things down into these tiny increments, you're able to sort of bypass that negative, oh, I can't do this, or oh, I don't want to do this. And the next thing you know, you've already gotten past the first few stumbling blocks. Now, how do I get a client to do that? I sit there side by side with them and we walk them through each of those tasks. Um, at the end of a session, they have accomplished quite a bit of what's been on their to-do list or what would have been on their to-do list if they had a list instead of piles of papers. But what they find is that it becomes innate, that each item triggers, do I need to do this or does someone else need to do it? Um, I call it the raft system. If you're drowning in paper, build yourself a raft where raft, the R is for refer, meaning you know, you're going to delegate it out to someone else. A is for act, but it doesn't mean you have to act right away. It means figure out when you're going to act on it, stick it in your tickler file for the day you're going to act on it, or you set a reminder on your computer to act on it. The F is file, which doesn't necessarily mean a file folder because you know, it could be digital. It could be in Dropbox. It could be on... Um, on a server somewhere, it could be filed in the trunk of your car. But file is making sure that things that you need to keep and maintain long term are going to have a home so that you can retrieve them when it makes sense for you. All those piles of papers are really just hiding things from you. And then the T, which we say is, uh, I'd say it's for toss, but that could mean shredding, it could mean recycling, um, it could mean making two points and throwing, throwing it in the, in the basketball trash can. But those four tasks, refer, act, file, and toss, pretty much apply to anything, whether it's tangible or digital, so that you can say, what do I need to do with this one thing in front of me? And then if it's something you need to act on, you're just going to break it down into what's the very next task that I can try to handle so it's no longer this looming, monumental, scary thing. It's kind of like that term paper in 10th grade that you got assigned on the first day of school and it was looming all the way to Thanksgiving. So mm -hmm. breaking it down is, is really helpful. Okay, we've got that system there. Let's stay on the filing for just a moment. What are some of the key filing um, uh, 
physical products, you know, uh, do you say a tickler file plus a long-term file plus a cold storage? I mean, what uh, parts of a filing system do you think are kind of essential for a small business? Well, I think you have to have something for action. And as I said, a tickler file, either the accordion file sorter or um, one of those little desktop file boxes that'll mm -hmm. hold about um, a dozen to two dozen um, active folders, that's great. I like something that is designating what day of the week that you're going to handle it. So if you wanted to just have seven folders for Monday, th Monday through Sunday, and the reason I say that is if you own a small business, you're not just there from, from Monday through Friday, whatever you're doing. Um, for reference, you really want to break that down into what I call red hot reference and general reference. If, if it's something you're grabbing all the time, whether it's um, phone numbers that are not necessarily programmed into your office phone because uh, landline office phones are are never as nimble and flexible as as your uh, as your as your uh, wireless phone um, but it might be um, codes that you need to enter um, to, to gain access to certain things not necessarily passwords because uh, a digital password organizer is probably going to help you more but all of those things that you need to get that piece of information right away I say you can usually um, print out, you know, create it digital, digitally and either keep it digitally or print it out and put it in um, one thin three ring binder that's on your desk that you can literally grab and if you have to run to another part of the building that's fine. Most of your reference though will be project files for clients, um, reference for um, things for invoices that you have paid, things that you had acted on, but now you're maintaining them either for legal reasons, financial reasons, or, or general reference. And that's what's going to go in your filing cabinet. Doesn't have to be a cabinet, it can be um, uh, a milk crate, one of those $6 uh, bright neon milk crates that they sell uh, Walmart or Target or Staples uh, for uh, college kids to use in their dorms. If you need to be mobile, if you um, are constantly in your car, having one of those milk crates for your reference in the trunk of your car or in the back seat can also work. But your, your system is going to be customized to you. You need something for your, um, for your action, something for the reference you literally reach for multiple times a day, and then reference um, for what you go through periodically. In terms of, of cold storage, um, a banker's box, full of things that have clients that you haven't worked with in two years, for example. Um, you can pack that up, but you can get that off-site. You can put that, if you have a home office, you can put that in your basement. Um, if you, um, if you're, you have a restaurant, a salon, any, ki any kind of um, physical plant, you're going to have some sort of storage area where you can get it out of what we call your prime real estate. Because you don't need to have everything within um, physical, you know, within your physical reach. How about, how about labeling? Is there a way, do you do alphabetical or alphabetical by client? I mean, because I'm sure there's a lot of different ways, but is there kind of a default kind of labeling system for a file that you would do? Well, I, I absolutely think there, there is, but again, that's going to be customized to who, who you are. So I think you start with something categorical. You know, you're going to have your finances, everything in terms of all of the accounts that you are paying. So if you have a business where you are actually in charge of ordering, of paying, paying the bills, you're going to have uh, a setup where you have information, um, at, and I would say yes, alphabetical by vendor, okay, something that, that's very, very simple for you to say, okay, um, we have the building internet coming from Comcast, so I'm going to be able to grab a C. Now, you can label alphabetically either by provider name or provider type. I believe in specificity. Okay. Um, the other thing is it's worth investing in a label maker to have typed, quickly, easily typed labels rather than taking a Sharpie and, and scribbling the, the name of the file. Because there's something particularly authoritative. When you see a file with a typed label, big, bold lettering, there's something about that that inspires you to put the papers that go there back there. Um, it sort of um, prompts you to go a little forward. 
Perfect. A lot of people like color coding. And color coding is great if you're a visual person, but there is a drawback to color coding. If you have all of your customer invoice files in green, and you run out of green folders, and you have two new clients, if your life is really busy, you are going to not rush out the door and go buy green file folders. You're probably not, at least in the beginning, going to delegate the task of going to get green file folders. But you're so afraid of breaking the system that you're not going to pull a blue or a yellow file folder. So what you do is you put those invoices in a pile on top of the filing cabinet and they just start building up and you've broken the system in a different way. So while color coding is great, you want to remember that done is better than perfect. Getting actually, actually, we would like people to run out and buy green folders. <laughs> <laughs> well, what they can do is they can get online and in about That's two minutes order those folders. That's right. That's right. But, but the problem is in that moment. Right. So what's better is to take a post-it note, turn it upside down so that you're writing on what would be the bottom of the post-it note so that the sticky part is now upside down on the bottom. Write what a temporary label for, for whatever color file folder it is, and then you can stick it there so that the, it's sort of sticking up where the tab would be and then when you do have your green file folders you're going to be able to switch that material out quickly again the goal is don't get so bogged down by your system that you lose productivity the, right. the system is to give you productivity but if you run into a stumbling block give yourself a temporary fix Awesome. Well, listen, we are out of time. I want you to promote your book, give out your website, and let people know what kind of work you do. Uh, if you're just local there in the, it's Tennessee area, correct? I'm in Chattanooga. That's okay. right. And that's so right. are you virtual? Can you go everywhere? So tell us how you work and how people can get a hold of you. Well, first of all, they can go to my website, which is really easy. It's juliebestry.com. That's J-U-L-I-E-B-E-S-T-R-Y.com. And, um, one of the things they can find on the website is my blog. I have blogged since 2007 as Paper Doll. Um, lots, of, lots of posts about Smead there among, like among that. others like about that. your products. Um, but there's a lot of information about organizing there. People can um, call or email me. There's that information on the website to hire me uh, to work locally. I do time management and some um, orga virtual organizing coaching on the phone, but primarily I work one-on-one -on -one with clients in the Chattanooga area, maybe a 50 mile radius. But for people who um, are trying to get organized, even if they don't own a business, I tell people, as we go through our lives, we are sort of leading the business of us. We are, we are doing that. So the book again is yeah, 57 yeah, yeah. Secrets for Organizing Your Small Business. And whether you are a one person business, 50 person business, you're thinking about going into business or you're just running the business of you there are there are lots and lots of tips in here that you can start right away in making tiny incremental changes to give yourself more control over your life awesome well Julie thank you so much for joining us today uh, I know we've only gotten through a couple of the 57 so we're gonna have to get you back again too on a future episode but uh, uh, best wishes to you and uh, we'll talk to you again you, soon you bet. Julie Bestry, 57 Secrets to Organizing Small Business. Now you've got a few of them. You'll have to come back to another episode to get the rest on keeping you organized.